Hello and welcome to another interview. Today it is the amazing Tyler Hannay. He is a rider for the St. Piran team um, and before then he was riding for a couple of teams on the continent. Um, he's a really great guy, great guy to, to chat with. He's recently won the uh, Clayton Memorial Race and he's also represented the um, Isle of Man on Commonwealth Games, which is truly incredible as someone who's so young. Um, but anyway, give it a listen, see what you think, and I'll chat again at the end. Hi, you all right? Yeah, not too okay? bad. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, thanks. Yeah, I'm all right. Just, um, yeah, just on a rest day today. Just, um, yeah, just training for the next race. So, yeah, not too bad. Gosh. Um... Well, actually, you started here, actually, is a good way to go in. Like, what do you do on a rest day? Like, because everyone's training's, you know, different. What, yeah, what what does a rest day look like for you? Um, well, it depends. Normally, if the, I should, if the weather's nice in the summer, I'd like to, I like to, you know, just relax and go for a ride with friends and stuff like that. But I think just trying to relax, really. It's not too bad now that there's, quite a bit of cycling on and you can there's always a race to watch and things like that and then yeah sometimes um uh, just work a bit part-time just uh yeah and a bit of cash and keep me busy so yeah it depends really but normally just try and relax i think that's the idea you know just um that's where all, all the um gains made and to be honest as i got older i've uh, started to take it more serious and stuff like that but yeah just um relax i guess and make sure to eat enough, drink enough, sleep enough, things like that. So just basics, really. Yeah, got it. Um, I couldn't help but notice the sort of seagull noise in the background. Whereabouts are you based currently? Because obviously you ride for a Cornish team, but you're from the Isle of Man. Both are equally likely to have seagulls somewhere. Um, so, yeah, where are you basing yourself at the moment? Um, yeah, so right now um, I'm, just in the, I'm just in the Isle of Man because, yeah, just training away and things like that. But... Um, yeah, kind of split my time between here and um, uh, got some family over near in the north of England, near Lancaster. So, oh, nice. yeah, I mean, they're not a million miles away from each other, but um, yeah, just split my time between there. Yeah, yeah, because a lot gets said about like how good the Isle of Man is to cycle on. Like, you know, it, it's a nice little island. I was lucky enough to do the junior tour of Isle of Man. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did yeah, the youth yeah. tour as a junior um i can't even remember who won it actually but um like the yates brothers did it i know that much <laughs> I'm, I'm that age um but yeah actually um look speaking of kind of the junior races um i noticed you won the junior tour of wales um a few years ago and it's always fun to look at who else raced that yeah um, yeah yeah no like, definitely like Josh Harling was down, I want to say about 25th or something, like quite a fair way back, and and Ben Askey and Noah Hobbs and like names of really good talented riders. Um, yeah. How does it feel yeah, to yeah. be like at the time? Do you like obviously a win's amazing? Do you look at who you're against and go, oh yeah, these guys are going to end up great, or do you go, oh, I've beaten these guys, uh, now I need to kick on? Like, what's the the mood like after that? Um. Well, I think the way I I think the way I won it, I kind of, yeah, I kind of didn't realise. And um, I obviously knew that there were a lot of talented riders in the race, like Max Poole, um, mm. Finley Picker, and, uh, yeah, Josh Tarlin, Josh Giddens, Noah Hobbs, who now are doing, yeah, like, for example, Tarlin and, and, and Max, they're, um, yeah, in the highest echelons of the sport. So, yeah, it was. But then I think because that was my first big win, I kind of... Um, yeah, didn't real didn't realise, but um, yeah, no, it definitely when I when I look back on the when I look back on the winners, it definitely makes me um, yeah, it makes me think that like if I can do it there, then then um, yeah, I can be on that level because yeah, I have won that race, but um, yeah, I wasn't like the main favourite going into it, you know, like Max, um, mm. Finley, Josh Tarlin, yeah, Josh Tarlin was lean until the last day, so um, yeah, and I think because. I think because it was um, uh, 2021, so it was just like, yeah, just after COVID and 
Um, the, the Nationals were really, really the only opportunities we've got. It was kind of, um, yeah, just, um, yeah, just tried to make the most of it and, and uh, yeah, maybe slipped maybe a bit under the radar. But, um, yeah, like, um, managed to stay in there and then just on the um, final stage up the tumble, the, the Queen stage kind of... Um, Slipped away in a good group with um, riders like Lucas Naruka, who's now at um, EF. And yeah, so I think I kind of, I think all the big guns were kind of looking at each other, and I kind of just, um, yeah, slipped off and managed to uh, gain enough time. And I knew I was like the highest on the, the G, I knew I was highest hmm. overall. So I knew if we stayed together and um, we finished as a group, then I would take it. But um, I just, once we hit that tumble, I just kind of yeah went um, as hard as I could from bottom to top, and only one lad managed to get with me. And and um, I kind of knew him; he was quite he's quite a good mate. So I was kind of like, well, you know, um, if you take the if you take the win, I'll take the overall and stuff. And you know, maybe in hindsight, I could have I could have believed in myself a bit more and maybe um, gone for it and tried to nab him. But I was just so like, yeah, I, it was the it was the biggest race you had all year. So I was just like, when I realised there was a chance to to win it then yeah I just kind of thought I'll just do the bare minimum to to get it really so yeah it was a great feeling and yeah it's always nice to look back on the winners and the names of the, the names of um yeah some of the greatest in our sport and the yeah yeah it's like it's one of the most prestigious races and it's kind of crazy just you could pick any year and there's going to be massive big hitters from the UK scene just dotted about the results sheet and not even at the top like as i said like no hobbs was quite a way down relatively speaking um even ben Askey, i think like yeah no, you'd definitely. Expect. yeah i think like um yeah that was the biggest race we we had all year so it was kind of it um yeah it was kind of um um, I just took because we only started getting racing in May, so I kind of just took every opportunity. And I think, um, yeah, I came out of lockdown really well. So I've got the first races, knew I was on like quite a good level compared and new. And then the, uh, two weeks before, I just um, took my first um, uh, national win, which was just um, ta- which was just uh, one of the stages of the Junior Tour of Mendips and. Um, mm. And um, yeah, just so I knew I had good confidence going into that race. And on the last stage of Mendips, on the second stage, it was a three stage event. And on the second stage, I was leading, but then unfortunately, um, just involved in a crash and stuff. So um, yeah, and I had a couple of mechanicals, so I was chasing. So I lost maybe five, six minutes. So then I just, uh, yeah, went up, uh, tried to go on a solo breakaway um, on the last day and had. Um, was in a decent group of riders like uh, Joshua Gollick, who won, um, yeah, like stage of Valdiosta last year. So I was in like a decent group, and then um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just went solo from that and just got caught. Finished up quite a um, finishes up quite quite a steep hit, hill, which is I think it's called like Yo Valley or something because it's near the Yo Valley headquarter, uh, headquarters. Mm-hmm. So and yeah, just got caught, just got caught, just um, yeah, I think I went too deep and um yeah just i, I started black start, i think that's the first experience i've had of like you know when people say hitting the wall and bonk and i think that's the first experience of like so I just couldn't see and then yeah just got caught so i knew i was i could take good confidence from it going into the junior tour of wales but then i think because i was always like fourth and fifth and never i never like um um never like showed my face too much i kind of i think all the big guns just looked at each other and then i could just secretly um slip off and then yeah that was it really rest is history nice um and if we can like i'd like to rewind and like how did you even get into cycling because everyone has a different journey and i always find that fascinating yeah for me um yeah like you like you said previously about um being from the Isle of man it's quite a big cycling culture yeah i think um I think yeah, just um, I I was really lucky to um, yeah, lucky that it's such a great cycling place. So I just um, where I live is about two hundred meters away from a BMX track, so um, which is quite a safe, safe you know, mm. safe environment. You know, you hear stories of people in London and like 
and um, they all go down to Hearn Hill. I think it's the same, but obviously that's a BMX track in there on the velodrome. But it was the same thing, just going down there with my mates during the summer. And yeah, it was just a great way to kill a day and have fun. And and then, um, yeah, just got started BMX racing and uh, enjoyed it. And yeah, I think really enjoyed that competition element um, against people, yeah, around proper, proper bikes and everything. And then just... Um, yeah, somebody said you should just start um, like circuit racing, just on the mountain, just on the mountain bikes up at um, the just where they all start somewhere. Like for example, um, in the Cavendish documentary, where um, the first sort of minutes are filmed around there, and yeah, just got around there, and then you, there's more people in the race, and there's more competition, and then I think I just yeah started. Um, started riding more and more and then it's like anything the more you the more hard work you put in the better you get so i started when i was about four and um my dad had like ridden the bike throughout his life um he wasn't so much of a like a racing cyclist he raced motorbikes you probably you probably know of the Ironman tt so he did yeah. that so he understood about bikes and the mechanical side and um all that side so he was really he was quite keen for it and obviously knew that it's like yeah he knew like it was a it was a good sport and stuff so they were happy to let me give it a go and then yeah just um started going up and then, yeah then started on the road bikes and then yeah just started going away when I was about 11 or 12 just across just a group of us um and yeah just grew and grew from there and then you meet more people that's where I met like people like Max Poole and Josh Tarlin and then Pete Field and uh, Finley Pickering and then you just yeah it just grows from there really and then so yeah that's how I really got into it oh nice and like how do you view yourself as a rider because obviously you've represented the Isle of Man um in the TT I've also seen you got like fourth in the corner this national um like a junior level so to me I'm like he's got a great TT on him clearly but then BMX background that's all about uh, yeah, I wish, I wish, like, yeah yeah like um i know some some riders started from bmx and they're like really they're like really punchy people like ethan vernon and um people like that like they're mm. really explosive but um no i think everyone's got their kind of you know you 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 know um i think you're either a sprinter or you're not so and for me <laughs> i'm not i just um no, I don't think it gave me that that top end speed. I think it just gave me like, um, yeah, just help. Just I think it does help. It's like the same as cyclocross. It does help your your um, bike handling and things like that. Going through corners, finding where um, the limits of the limits of the tires are and things like that. But um, yeah, I wish it. I wish it gave me a bit more um, a bit more of a sprint. But um, now, like you said, yeah, I think um, I think yeah, just. I quite enjoy the time trial. I think because I quite enjoy like the process behind it, you know, people like Dan Bigham and people like that. I think, um, yeah, I really like people like that, that um, look for all the marginal gains. And also I really like that. It's just, just you on your own, really just, um, you know, you can only go as hard as you want to and it's a mental and a physical battle. So I really enjoy that. And then, yeah, I think I'm quite like, I don't know. I'm quite, uh, I'm a bit in the middle, like, um, yeah, I go uphill pretty well, but um, I'm not a pure climber because I'm like six foot one and seventy kilos, so I'm not like the lightest. You know, I'm not um, Quintana or like you say the Yates brothers. But yeah, if I had to, if I in the, I'd say I can't. I kind of see a bit of like Bradley Wiggins or um, someone nowadays as are quite like um, Matteo Jorgensen, who's obviously done really well recently, and Brandon McNaughty. I see myself a bit like. Um, them like strong riders good in the time trial um yeah can use their power to climb and uh yeah good at all terrain really so those are the two current riders that i really try and resemble myself like yeah and that's really interesting because it's like trying to think of like who to base yourself on and based on physiology as well because as you said six foot one is is very rangy um yeah 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 got quite long legs yeah yeah so um yeah, but I think even I think the good thing about nowadays is like yeah, all shapes and sizes can can um, do well. You know, like um, if you look at the, you know the two of the two of the best riders in the world, um, 
Van der Poel and Van Aert, you know, they're big lads and things like that. But then you've also got Pogac who can give it to them on other on um, their their kind of parkour. So yeah, I think um yeah, it's, there's like I think there's a I think for anyone that's getting into the sport, there's always a right. There, there will always be a top rider that you kind of can see yourself like. Yeah, I think that's awesome, and obviously it does help for time trials. Being taller, you get like UCI. Well, I don't know how many UCI time trials you're doing, but I know that like the restrictions are kind of nicer almost, or like there's yeah, weird think, sub yeah, yeah. restrictions. Yeah, yeah, I think um, obviously uh, the UCI do put up quite a lot of restrictions, like in this past week with the new gyro helmet um, oh. and things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to like start. A, get into a rabbit hole about it because but yeah i know um obviously this year there's the category one two and three and um yeah so i fit into the category two so it does kind of it does it does help and also um yeah i think for even taller riders as well so yeah i think there is like there is also ways it can help you expect being taller yeah um how do you deal with the mental side then of time trialing because as you said it is physical and mental like i've done a few time trials and like when you're on a great day it feels yeah. amazing but if you're on not such a great day it's yeah. like oh i'm stuck with me and my own thoughts for yeah an hour on this 25 mile course great <laughs> it's like yeah. how do you deal with them yeah i think like even if you're on a good day you want to push harder and then if you're on a bad day you want it it's just it, it takes longer so i think it's like yeah, I think it's just. Uh, um, I think uh, one of the things I've started to realise and stuff like that, and I think is just um, yeah, confidence. I think that's the big thing. I le- the biggest thing I've learned this winter and stuff. And um, I think yeah, I think um, if you have self confidence, I think you can, even if you don't have as much physical ability, if you have a lot of self confidence, I think it can make up for that. But I think it's just um, yeah, just determination um and also like i think it's just i think you have to there's also a scientific i think it's kind of also yeah looking at the course but um yeah just there is a scientific element to it but i also think it's yeah just yeah just uh, find where it hurts and um keep going i guess just uh yeah just i think also in, in training that's probably harder because it's just you on your own and things like that but I think once you get in once you start to do like time trials and races I don't think it's that bad because there is that competitive element Mm. but then also there is quite a individual element of like for example if you're doing say a 10 mile or 25 mile like we have in the in the UK like um you can cut different courses and you can get things like pbs and so I think uh, pbs and you can also see where you you know you can improve week week on week so I do think there's an element of individual and, and competitive so I think that does help as well because yeah there's always someone in an event who you can try and of who you can kind of um yeah see if you want to beat or see if you're improving compared to them yeah of course um let's talk about your career then um obviously you started with the Isle of Man um utmost team and then you went to the CC Atubes um which is a reasonably well-known French um amateur team um and then followed that with was it the Nibali team in Italy yeah 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 and then um yeah just at St. Pierre and yeah 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 so obviously um yeah so I think it was in 2021 I just um yeah and I was uh well I was in 2020 in the lockdown and stuff and um i think the lockdown did kind of help for me personally i know it obviously hindered quite a few people but for, for me personally i know it quite, it helped a bit because i think um it made me i think it kind of gave me time to just ride my bike and um yeah just in, enjoy it and start to look because i was kind of um yeah stepped up to the stepped up to the juniors and struggling and then it's kind of yeah it was getting getting tougher and yeah um, gone maybe from being at the front to the back so I wasn't enjoying it as much and then got like this four or five month period of just like yeah do what you want so I kind of really really um um I didn't even think about I didn't even think about racing it was just like yeah just ride your bike and um 
just started to enjoy the training aspect of it and then yeah hit 2021 and then um, it was kind of I knew I wasn't able to get away to Europe I knew that wasn't I knew that was very unlikely obviously Ed did end, end up doing one event but um, so I was kind of yeah a bit worried of like oh what's going to happen you know like um, is that it so is that it sort of thing so then um, I think I just got a I think um, someone just put my name forward and then I got a message before the race even started. So then I thought like, you know, maybe when I look back to what happened in the next couple of months, maybe, you know, if I would have known that, then uh, maybe would have held out and seen what happens and then maybe this, that and the other. But I think um, also why I, I did start to do well in 2021 was I think I thought, you know what, like I've got a decent enough team for the following year, like worst comes to worst, like, just get back into the swing of race and just enjoy it and this that and the other but obviously it, it went pretty well and I th- and then um yeah and then just um yeah then in 2022 went out to France and I uh, there, it started to go right near the back end of the year but I think in the first couple of months I just struggled with I spent two years with Covid being at home barely you know I didn't even you know you're always in I was in my house 700 plus days of the year out of the two years and stuff and then I've gone to a foreign country at 18 and it was kind of yeah maybe um I look back now maybe the things I could have done differently but um yeah I didn't I don't regret it I I definitely don't regret it at all I think um yeah it exposed me to a new racing style and like um yeah I got to uh, a couple of nice results near the end of the year and stuff and I think it brought me on and I was in a nice area and got some cool opportunities so um yeah and then so that was it and then um yeah I just um got invited got invited out to it got invited out to um I was in Italy for for a training camp just uh, training with one of my friends from the UK and then um he was actually from Cornwall and that's where I ended up meeting Steve and that's kind of where I got um Steve Lampier and that's where I first mm. met him and that's where so um and then yeah just went out and then uh, did a couple of races out there on my own and then it was kind of like yeah CC two so like we're turning into more of like a classics um squad with the races we're doing and they were just like you know um I think it's best um I think it's best if maybe look for something else and I kind of thought yeah fair enough you know but most of my um best thoughts are coming hillier races and things like that so I was just like yeah fair enough so then yeah maybe a little panicking a little bit but then um yeah um got this got this opportunity to join the Nibley team and um yeah it, um it started to go all right but then to be honest I, I just um got quite ill and quite a few health problems and yeah just um it was a rough couple of months I, it was it was like um yeah i couldn't i couldn't get diagnosed fully what it was but um yeah ended up getting like um glandular fever so that kind of knocked me back quite a bit and then it was kind of yeah it was quite a big mental battle and then i think um yeah just uh, steve just kind of threw me a lifeline and just basically said like yeah there's this uh opportunity you know um uh, you might have to start in August with the and ride it under a stagiaire, but then also, um, but then also we'll try and do it before. And I think yeah, I owe a lot to Steve for him providing me that opportunity. But um, yeah, started good in Italy, like, um, and then I got talent spotted to go on the Ineos training camp, so that like good things did come out of it. So it wasn't oh. wasn't the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. And that was really. Um, that was a really great opportunity and really um, installed the fire in me. And then, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just got the opportunity and joined St. Piran and then, um, yeah, it was really good actually. It kind of, I think um, there was quite a profession, even though it's just a continental team, there's a big, I think the only thing that, that makes it not a professional, like a pro conti team is that, is the budget really. I think, um, yeah, everyone's got a professional mentality to it and, Looking at the riders this year, especially, there is quite a, um, yeah, there's quite a lot of experience um, within such a, within within a relatively small team. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible, like, looking at that team lineup, like, because obviously you've got Alex Richardson, who's, you know, spent time racing in all sorts of places, 
Yeah, um, I think, um, yeah, Alex has been like a great involvement. I've been lucky enough to have him as my coach this winter and I think, um, yeah, that's wow. the best like step I've made, if I'm honest, really. I think um, like you can watch the videos online and you can just see how much he puts into the sport um, and he's still like as hungry as ever. And yeah, he's got so much knowledge, you know, he's come from, I think he's... Um, you know he's gone he knows what it's like to have gone through every situation whether that's like overtraining underconfidence like um uh, yeah he knows how to spot these things and yeah i think that's the biggest thing i've learned this that's the biggest thing he's um is yeah ch- switching to alex as my coach has been like has been like yeah the the biggest investment and the greatest investment i've seen for my cycling so far oh that's amazing and you said that the uh, Ineos training camp kind of put a bit of fire into you. Like, what, I guess, what happened during the camp? Like, what did they have you doing and what was that yeah. experience like in general? Well, yeah, it was, there was about, um, well, there was only about eight to ten riders. Hmm. And um, because there was a group in Tenerife, a group in Australia, a group in Argentina racing, so... There was only about eight to ten riders that were just they yeah, started their see started their season just a bit later, but um, yeah, there was about so there was about eight to ten, eight to ten uh, up and coming riders. And to be honest, when you look at the riders now, it was people like um, uh, Finley Pickering was there, um, uh, AJ August who now rides for the team, Antonio Morgado, uh, Artem Schmidt, riders like that who were like yeah, big under mm. twenty three. Yeah, no, 100%. So, like, um, yeah, I did. I was, like, quite um, privileged to be there, to be honest. And then um, there was a couple from the Ineos Kenyan project, and they were great. And to be honest, there was never, like, it wasn't, like, it never felt as a competition. I think everyone was just, yeah, happy to be there. Everyone got on, and, yeah, there's some of my, some some good friends I have now and things like that. So, um, but, yeah, it was honestly just, like, uh, they did a couple of tests. Uh, I unfortunately got ill in the last two days. Uh, <laughs> a couple of yeah, there was a bit of a bug going around, and I think um, yeah, just a couple of riders, and then I passed, and then I got it from a couple. Of, I got it from a couple of a couple of the riders. But yeah, it was honestly just like riding with them, uh, chatting to them, seeing what goes on, and um, yeah, it's quite. A, I mean, everyone knows it's quite like a high performance environment, but yeah, it was really like, it was a really. Um, quite a big it was really cool to see what goes on and only seen like small snippets of it and i do think um obviously they've i wouldn't say they've not dropped off but obviously other teams have come up and kind of um like jumbo and uae and things like that but i do think with some of the riders they have now like for example josh tarlin um magnus sheffield tom tom pidcock carlos rodriguez i think um yeah, I do think I think they'll be back on top sooner or later. I do think, um, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, and then you just got full access to everything, whether that was the chef, uh, the team car, um, yeah, massage things like that. So it was honestly, I think it was just an idea to see what goes on and things like that. I think the idea was to just um, yeah, just create a bit of fuel of, of um, create a bit of like. Um, motivation to walk away and things like that hmm. yeah and obviously yeah we, we've spoken about the fact that you're with St Piran now um obviously I've well I've met um Ricky before and had a chat with him and Steve on uh, one occasion and you know they're, they're clearly very passionate men about that project and I think yeah. it's quite incredible and you've said like how influential having Alex as your coach has been um how are you finding that experience in general as well like also, did it help sway you? Like, I know you said it's a bit of a lifeline anyway, but does it help that, you know, they're one of the, the most successful teams domestically and they're kind of stable? They've, they've been going around for a year, a few years. So that, you yeah, know, that there's no, I guess it's quite a secure place to go. Yeah, yeah. I think um, also the way it works is I think they will always, I, can't, I think they always will be sustainable. So I think that's always good and gives you a bit of security. You know, for example, last year you had um, uh, the Wivsunga team in the mm. previous years. You've had other teams which have come and gone, which 
I think, yes, yeah, um, unfortunately, there's been quite a few talented riders that unfortunately have had to stop for one reason or another. But, um, yeah, no, I think when you look at it from the outside, it's kind of you don't realise what goes on, you know, obviously. Um, I saw, like, the, the one, two, three in Lincoln and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, when I when I joined, it's, it was really great. Like, um, Zeb, Zeb and Jack are obviously now on to um, bigger things, really. Um, yeah, really uh, showed, like, why, why they deserve it, you know, from their professionalism to, um, yeah, how seriously they, they just do the little things from, like... Um, yeah the aerodynamics to the bike set up and and i would say alex is at the for the the forefront of that you know he knows everything whether it's to do with he knows everything about everything everything some of the stuff he says goes can sometimes go over my head but <laughs> like um yeah and even to be honest even there's a couple of riders which um i think maybe because of the success of jack and zeb kind of flew a bit under the radar which um Riders like um, Harry Birchall and people like that, who obviously um, ended up winning Rydale and kind of started to show what he was about. And Will Tidball, who's obviously done big things on the track and did win, mm. did end up winning a race last year on the road. I think they kind of flew under the radar this year, so uh, last year, sorry. So um, yeah, I think um, I think yeah. Also having people like Ricky and obviously Steve has now um, moved on, so um, mm. it was a bit. It was a bit of a I mean, it's it's life at the end of the day, you know, he's he wants, you know, he's got, a, it's the same as as riders, we want to progress and step up, but also I think it's the same for them, you know, for people like Steve and also um, one of the girls that was in for media kind of um, from Cornwall, she went, now works at Ineos, so um, yeah, it's good to see, and I think another mechanic that um, uh, works for DSM soon now, I think it's good to see also not just the riders, but the staff are striving to make to the top echelons of of the sport. But also, um, yeah, like Julian Wynn's coming in this year and he's got like so much experience. So, yeah, no, it is really good. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, um, that's amazing. And obviously you've started the season really well, um, winning the Clayton Memorial race, which, you know, great result. Um, St. Piran back on top as well, or still on top not even back on top but you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah what are the I guess what are the ambitions for the rest of the season like have you got any goals that you're you're aiming for any particular races you you're trying to target yeah I mean to be honest like um I started off quite strong so I didn't want I and um and obviously we do have like we do have a good race calendar this year so I think the only really big goal I've set for myself is kind of the national time trial champs in the under 23. But to be honest, other than that, I think it's just, um, yeah, just, I think now that I've kind of um, realised that, yeah, I'm on quite a good level that I just want to try and do the best in every race, really. Just, yeah, just try and do the best result possible. I think, like, like before, like I said, the time trial, you can control it quite a bit. So that's kind of, yeah, the big aim. But yeah, just for every race and just try to be on, yeah, a good enough level to get selected in these races because, yeah, it is a strong team. So, you know, if you're being selected, then, yeah, you're obviously going quite well and you're able to do quite well in some of the races. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, looking at the races, I would, um, personally, I, quite, I would like to do the Tour of Britain if I got selected. I think that'd be a really cool opportunity. And obviously, um, Zeb doing well last year, I think. Um, and St. Payne leaving their mark, I think I'd like to go there and really, um, yeah, try to do something like they did last year. But yeah, no, my only big goal is to um, just keep, in, keep improving physically and then, um, yeah, just probably just the national time trial, really. Yeah, I guess... It... One question I used to ask this quite a lot, and I think I've stopped recently. But I'm going to bring it back as a, a bit of a throwback. Like, what what would you consider then at the end of a season if you look back and go, okay, I've been successful. Like, how are you defining success for yourself? Well, I mean, obviously the the simple answer, like ev- like every like most riders, is obviously I would like to you know make that step to the world tour and stuff. So obviously that's the that would be that would make it successful, but I think um, 
Yeah, I'd really, I'd really loved. Obviously, um, since being like an under twenty three, the Clayton Bell was like my first win on the road. So really, it would just be to like, I'd like to win in either a national A or a UCI, and then yeah, just um, yeah, the British ta- the British time trial champs would be like, if I won that, that would be amazing. That would be that would be season, and then obviously. Um, yeah, try to do the best that I can at the world champs, but um, yeah, I'd like to just, uh, I'd like to just win, you know, like winning is such a great feeling that I just like to, yeah, just try to or be as close to winning as possible. Yeah, yeah, because it's cycling such a weird sport as well, because like no matter how good you are, like you're gonna spend most of your time not winning. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> out of the two options, like winning's great, but you don't get to do it a lot. Like, yeah no definitely i think um yeah like even if you can get if you can get if you can get one or two wins i think that's like yeah it, it for most people it'll be a successful season but then when you put it in terms of like how many race days you had it's actually like such a small percentage so it is i think you've definitely got to make use of the days that you do feel really good and can go for a result because it's i mean unless you're like really good across everything then it is kind of a bit more few and far between and also like for a team like us that um yeah last year did the tour of norway and um tour of britain and things like that you know that these are the races where um yeah maybe a win at a lower level is maybe a top 20 top 15 top 10 a good a good result in the stage a good result in the breakaway you know it's kind of a win is you have to kind of remind yourself that a win is not first across the line. It's maybe smaller goals that you set for yourself in that race. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's kind of where I like to to wrap things up. Um, the only question I've got left is really like, how can people keep up with you on social media? Like, you know, just to see your goings on, what races you're doing, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm just on I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Um, on Instagram, Tyler Douglas Hanny, and then on um, Twitter, Tyler Hanny three, and yeah, I just, I just um, post regularly on that to just keep updates on what races we're doing, and also you can always um, follow the team. They're quite big on social media, so that's just Saint Pierre and on um, Twitter. So um, yeah, that's the main places you'll find me really. Yeah, and well, like if, if any if any of the listeners had anything, like if they want to ask a question or anything don't feel don't um can always feel free to uh, write me a message you know i'm always open and willing to be honest about anything awesome well as i'm speaking right now it will be your instagram um and then at this point there'll be a picture of your twitter and finally right about i'll say now uh will be st Piran's twitter um just Real. in terms of the video um all that's left to say then is thank you so much. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, yeah, it's my first ever podcast. So, um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Well, there you go. What an engaging and just really talkative young guy. Um, I really liked chatting to him. Um, feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that goodness. Um, and we'll see you with another interview soon.